Shabbat Shalom. I'm happy to be here today and to have the honor to preach. So the question is, which uh, commandments from the Bible do you know? Okay, I see that you know quite a lot of commandments, Shema also. And which one of those is the most difficult one? First one, to love unconditionally. And it goes already in the right direction, to love other people. And I also think that it is the love, that it is the most difficult commandment. And I would love to read Matthew 22, starting with verse 34. Matthew 22, verse 34. Als die Pharisäer hörten, dass er die Sadduzäer zum Schweigen gebracht hatte, versammelten sie sich miteinander. Und es fragte einer von ihnen ein Gesetzesgelehrter und versuchte ihn und sprach, Lehrer, welches ist das größte Gebot im Gesetz? Er aber sprach zu ihm, du sollst den Herrn, deinen Gott, lieben mit deinem ganzen Herzen, mit deiner ganzen Seele und deinem ganzen Verstand. Dies ist das größte und erste Gebot. Das zweite aber ist ihm gleich. Du sollst deinen Nächsten lieben wie dich selbst. An diesen zwei Geboten hängt das ganze Gesetz und die Propheten. But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On, those, on these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. And this is coming exactly um, right after the Shema from the um, book of Deuteronomy. It is to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And today I want to focus more on the second part, to love your neighbor as yourself. But I think there are also some conclusion that you can draw um, from this about loving God. But why is love so difficult? Because of our flesh. <laughs> Because of um, our self centeredness. Probably there's not only one right answer to this question. But in the Bible, it doesn't say, think about love, which would be more easy. It 
It is written, love your neighbor, and then it also um, is a question if he really understands this or if only you mean it. And this is much more uh, difficult. And also love cannot put um, so easily into commandments. For example, if I would um, um, send flowers to Maximus now, do you think that he would feel um, loved by me? <laughs> I estimated that he would say no, maybe. <laughs> So now you know if you want to do something nice to Maximus, then send him flowers. But just as an example, what I wanted to say is that if I, um, if I want to do something for my wife Deborah, then I need to do something that she likes and not what maybe I like. So, for example, for myself, flowers are not so important or not so special. And now, a short, a short story, I, I went to uh, the wedding of an old friend of mine. And then, during the evening, the father of the bridegroom was um, giving a speech. And in the speech, he said to his son, to the bridegroom, the following words. You used to be a child, but now you are a real man. And I'm proud of you. Wow, I really thought that it's amazing to hear those words from a father. How he showed his love and appreciation towards his son. And especially among men, it is sometimes not easy to show appreciation and to say to one another that I'm proud of you. And maybe you know the scripture when Yeshua was baptized and the Spirit of God descended um, upon him from heaven and then there was a voice and what does God say? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Is this not beautiful? God says to his son Yeshua that he loves him. That he, from, from his heart he is I'm glad about him. And this is a role model for us. And not only for a man. So it sounds really nice to talk about love and appreciation. But why is love so difficult sometimes and what prevents love or hinders love? Fear of being refused, jealousy. Our imperfectness. 
misunderstandings. And there are many things, but I would love to focus on this aspect of wounds, that wounds um, are, uh, um, are making love impossible or um, prevent love to happen. For example, in a family, for example, it's not always easy to love each other because sometimes they may have hurt you. The more so I know somebody or somebody knows me and um, I trust this person, the more this person can hurt me. If you just saw somebody a few times um, and he says something against you, then it's not so deep. It's not so deeply hurting you. But especially people who are really close to my heart, yeah, it can be hard to love <laughs> because there are wounds and it's hard to overcome those wounds. And it can even happen that I'm drawing backwards because I want to protect myself and not to be hurt again and again. But now, what can we do um, to overcome this? How do we um, love even though there are wounds? Because we can heal those wounds with the help of God. And maybe you have already assumed it that the key is forgiveness. Forgiveness has the power to overcome wounds and to make love possible. But forgiveness does not always start where I need to forgive somebody else. Forgiveness always starts between God and me, or me and God. We read in the Bible that God is described as sad and even angry because um, people did not follow his commandments. We are kind of hurting God when we uh, don't follow his commandments because we are not faithful. But thanks God, he is greater than all of this. He already knew before that we would break his covenant. And about this covenant, I would love to read a few verses from the book of Genesis. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis 15, verses 9 and 10. Und er brachte ihm alle diese. 
Und er zerteilte sie in der Mitte und legte je einen Teil dem anderen gegenüber, die Flügel aber zerteilte er nicht. So God said to Abraham, bring me a three-year-old cow and a three-year-old female goat and a three-year-old ram and a turtle dove and a young dove. Then Abram brought all these to God and cut them into two and laid each half opposite the other, but he did not cut the birds. And then we read verse 17 and 18. Verse 17. It came about when the sun had set that it was very dark, and behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming torch which passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land from the river of Egypt as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. In this passage in the Torah it is described how God is making a covenant with Abram. And a sign of the covenant, he goes in form of a flaming torch through the pieces of the animals. Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman, who was also called Nachmanides. So Nachmanides describes that the Shechina, the glorious uh, presence of God, was uh, going through the pieces in this passage. And so it means that God himself was making this covenant with Abraham. But what does it mean that, that God was going through these um, pieces? And so there are a few scholars, Bible scholars, who said that um, back then when two people made a covenant or uh, no, when two people went through these um, pieces of animals, so it means that they were making a covenant together, both of them, because they both walked through it. And if one of them was um, and breaking the covenant, then it means that he would also die as a judgment, as these animals just had died. So how many partners of covenant do we have here? So we have God and Abraham here. And how many do walk through it? Only God. It means that God was making this covenant with Abram. But God is also the one who is sustaining this covenant. So, so he is also responsible for this covenant. Hält 
So no matter if Abraham or his descendants would break the covenant, God still promised that He would keep the covenant because He made the covenant with Abraham. And when I, for the first time, read this passage and thought about it, I understood a very important connection. One part of it is to make the covenant. But the other part is to to die if if the covenant is broken. Do you understand the connection? When we think of Yeshua, the Son of God, what did he have to do? He needed to die because of our sins. Why? Because we broke the covenant. If Abraham had gone through these uh, in animals that were cut into pieces, then he would have uh, been um, obliged to die because of the sins. But Yeshua took our sins on himself. So that this um, so that this separation would be um, overcome. And thanks to God, Yeshua is not dead. He is risen from the dead. And he opened the way to God. And this is truly the biggest um, yeah, present that we have here. And it is, um, this is for everybody, even though if you feel worthy or not. And if somebody of you here has not received this yet, this big gift of God, I would love to encourage you to come to the front and we can pray together and you can receive this great gift of God. But now let's go back to the topic of forgiveness. We talked about love and how difficult it is um, to love. And that it can be even more difficult to love our family and close friends and uh, brothers and sisters in the congregation. Because there might be wounds that um, prevent love to happen. And exactly here, um, forgiveness um, starts to work. Because forgiveness starts between me and God. We have to understand where we have sinned against God and are guilty. And for this, we need the forgiveness of Yeshua. 
his blood that he shed on Pesach, because he shed it for us and it washes us、um, clean. And if we then look at our family members and friends and other people who have hurt us, then we can forgive also them because of the power of Yeshua, and we can see them through the eyes of God and forgive them and love them. So now I want to ask you, what is which day do we have today? Shabbat, right? What is the date? Twenty-eighth of of what? September. Twenty-eighth Elul. In the Jewish calendar. It's also the 28th、uh, of Elul today. And also, Vladimir Fuchs was talking in his commentary about、uh, the special meaning of the month Elul. There is a custom that every day of the month Elul, the shofar is blown in the community, so that people repent, that people ask forgiveness of other people they have hurt, and also that they should show kindness towards other people. So I hope Maximus will receive many flowers. But please, not only to Maximus. <laughs> But before I end with this sermon, I would love to to hint at a very practical aspect that makes loving easier. When somebody hurt me and I forgive him with the help of God, and then when I see the person the next time, then it can be that I remember what he has done that hurt me, and then maybe the memories come back and the thoughts what he has done to me. And maybe then I will always tell this person, yeah, but you have done this to me. Make some comments. But this is not real forgiveness. Imagine God would always tell you again what you have done wrong. Would this not be terrible? But、uh, we read about God in the book of Micah, and let's read this together in Micah seven. Der Schuld vergibt und Vergehen verzeiht dem Rest seines Erbteils. Nicht für immer behält er seinen Zorn. Micah 7, Vers 18 through 20. Wird unsere Schuld niedertreten und du wirst alle ihre Sünden in die Tiefen des Meeres werfen. Du wirst an Jakob Treue erweisen, an Abraham Gnade, die du unseren Vätern gesprochen hast. Micah 7 verse 
Who is a God like you, who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious act of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in unchanging love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. You will give truth to Jacob and unchanging love to Abraham, which you swore to our forefathers from the days of old. You remember the covenant that um, God made with Abraham in Genesis. And Yeshua renewed this covenant. And so we stand before God and we know that He forgives our sins and that He loves us. So let us also love one another. Let us truly forgive one another. And throw the sins so far away from us that we don't even remember them. And even when there, are, even when memories come back, then we um, choose the love of God and to love God and to love our neighbors. Amen.